the truth. Hey guys, what's up, Green Machines? I am back with another video, and this has been a while. Um, I know the latest one wasn't too long ago, but this series has been gone for quite some time, to be honest. It's the Washington football team rebuild, 20-year rebuild. And something I didn't realize, I've already recorded the next two seasons. I just got to put them together, and I got to record them as well. Well, put the audio in. But uh, some of these guys are getting up there in age. Like, some of the guys I drafted are getting up, up there in age and are about ready to regress. But with that being said, guys, if you guys are new here, my name is Green Machine Sam. This is the content I type typically do. Uh, it's rebuilds. It's franchise modes. It's stuff like this. This is kind of a hybrid um, now that we have a good team, I don't jump into regular season games, but I will jump into postseason games more than likely. I'll show some clips here and there. Maybe it, it's mainly like touchdowns, turnovers, and like plays over 30 yards normally. I don't really just show everything, especially since this video is already 23 minutes, and I know that because I already have the clips all put together. It's over 23 minutes, and uh, I don't think I really show that many play, playing clips. Uh, I show re-signs, I show trades, I show, you know... The depth chart, I show a lot of stuff. Uh, this team, it, it, it's in a weird state. It really is. Uh, we have a running back that I thought could have been the future, who, let's be frank, is not. Uh, and Greg Toller. We have a running back in Cam Allen, who is only a power back. We have Woodson, who's only a receiving back, but he's old. We have we're, we have a void in that third string spot, but we do have Trace, Tracy Spence now. Um, we do have Ridley still, who is a backup slot guy. We have Steven Street. We have Phillips, but Phillips has officially, I think, hit the point of regression now. Steven Street has proved very, very good. Uh, the offensive line is kind of mismatched right now, and I did have to go out and just try to draft a guy in digs, but, and then the defense is even in more of a disarray. Uh, linebacker is struggling right now. Corners have been good since we've drafted them. Ramos and Beckham coming out together out of Notre Dame have been absolute dom absolutely dominant. Beckham is a new guy that we brought in. McCullers is a guy that we brought in last year off of the free agency. Mike Lau has turned into a star across from Chase Young. Chase Young finally hitting that elite level, but he's already hitting regression. Ed Oliver has been one of the best defensive tackles in the league since coming and joining us. Uh, but linebacker has been an absolute devastating thing since we did start losing a lot of our guys because of money. It's got, it's that simple. Certain uh, spots on the team, you're going to have to lose people and you're going to have to get rid of people just because of the fact that you don't have unlimited money in here. And uh, when you got to pay those big guys and got to pay the guys that ultimately produce the most, you have to get rid of some other guys. And linebacker has been really affected by that. John J.J. Mayard and Payne still here as our kicker and punter. Specialist for running backs is basically just going to be best available. Defensive line, best available. Uh, corners, I put people in there just to, you know, try to help out. Uh, Steven Street still is going to be in the spot with Ridley and Spence. Uh, Spence is just trying to get some upgrade points. Uh, so, I don't know. This seems really good. It's it's really good. It, it is, but there's definitely some glaring holes, and that's going to be the biggest problem, is that can we address those holes in a timely manner, or are we going to basically drop dead because of the fact that we can't fill those holes and we can't make a good, uh, put together a good team. Kirksky, I think, is a safety move to outside backer at this point. I think I just had him as an extra safety, and he was a run stopper, so, well, run support, so I just said, fuck it, you're going to play linebacker now for me? Um, Because then you're basically running a nickel no matter what. You're basically running either a hybrid nickel or you're running a normal nickel. You're either running three safeties or you're basically running three corners with Kirksky out there. But then again, I'm playing dime if I'm playing nickel because he's our second sub backer. Um, this is one of the last seasons that I actually like fully went in on, you know, having a decent uh, practice squad. 
So we did end up trading Joe Shields, Jay Butler, and Henry Boston before I took that video clip, so that's why they're all gone. Billups, Davis, and Smith as well, they're all gone because of before that. Uh, just guys I couldn't pay. Ratliff and Moore also gone for a first-round pick. Because I'm not going to let people walk for free. And that's one of the things that I hate seeing in rebuild is people letting people walk for free. If you have any type of value, your your ass is getting traded if I can't resign you or if I think you're going to be too much. Matt Phillips, this is probably one of the contracts I regret as of right now because I do think I have season 14, 15, and 16 recorded. I, I gave him too many years. Uh, now, he hasn't dropped off completely yet, but I do kind of regret it. Mike Lau, I loved getting him signed this early because it puts him in a, in a state where I can hold on to him for a long time, as well as Elabre. Both these guys are turning into studs already, and they're both like 24 years old, which means they're going to be on the team for a lo long time. It's kind of like what Chase Young's situation was. Chase Young, I think, was 25 when we re-signed him, and he was an absolute stud. Granted, he never produced on paper, it seems like, but hey. Uh, Elabre, he actually got an X-Factor trait. Uh, I did not play that game at all, which is the crazy part. He actually got an X-Factor trait, which I am surprised about. We did end up making the playoffs. We did end up going up against the New York Giants, and this was apparently Ed's last year. Ed Oliver said, I'm getting old, I'm getting tired, I want to leave. I don't know why he would talk to uh, Jose Ramos. Maybe they have a connection somehow. Maybe they both like fucking Fortnite. I don't know. Granted, it's 2032, I think, at this point, so... We ended up not getting the number one seed. We actually weren't even that good. We're 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 the number six seed. So it's gonna be a long road ahead of us if we do want to make the Super Bowl. And here's the funny part: the Seahawks have Austin Hawkinson. No, they don't have. No, they have Ryan Hawkinson. We have Austin Hawkinson. And this little storyline that I made up uh, when he got drafted was that they're brothers because they're both from Iowa State. I think they're two years apart. So, I was like, they're brothers. You know, sometimes if I see the same name and they're kind of weird names, well, not normal names, I'll be like, oh, that's his brother. And, you know, I'll make up that storyline because we did ha end up having a safety named uh, Chris Atkinson. And we drafted a tackle named Juan Atkinson. And so we made up the storyline that those two were actually brothers. And that also played into a part of us drafting that guy. Uh, receive uh, running wasn't spectacular but it is getting better that is something that I am proud of Matt Phillips not in the slot puts up over a thousand yards eight touchdowns straight 940 yards five touchdowns uh, Pat puts up 800 yards three touchdowns and Spence I think he's a rookie still at this point no he's second year guy 659 yards six touchdowns so you know team's looking okay for the most part uh, Manu Contreras is still coming along second year in the league and uh yeah uh, the fucking team's gonna shit itself apparently. Yeah, Juan at Juan Atkinson as a right guard, a right tackle moving into right guard, only let up one sack at a 72 overall. Within the 71 overall, star dev left tackle lets up 23. Got it. Chase Young ten and a half sacks. Mike Lyle seven and a half. Ed Oliver five and a half. Brandon Elbray four and a half. Sanborn four. Kirksey, two, Beckham, one. Um, so we definitely put on a decent sack rate. I don't know why Elibre was getting in there so much. Maybe he accidentally got subbed in at rush end or rush D tackle, I guess. I don't know. But he did get in there, and he did get four and a half. So he was our fourth leading guy. But he was also tied for our pick leader with Davis, Beckham, Beckham, Ash, and uh, himself. So... Yeah, we have Beck um and we have Beck Ham. So it's kind of weird saying both their names because you both because you just want to call them Beckham. But you know we do it. We did have a blocked kick as well as multiple fumble, forced fumbles, one fumble recovery, one safety from Isaiah Simmons, and then one touchdown for Chase Young and Gordon Davis. Kicking, J.J. Mayard, perfect from extra point, 19 of 23 for 82%. Three of his kicks were blocked on field goals, 
So he only technically missed one field goal. Granted, he did miss four, but and one of those and those three could have been off anyway. But he technically only missed one field goal in my mind. So no kick return touchdowns, no punt return touchdowns. Uh, for MVP, like I said, Ryan Hawkinson on the Seahawks. He went 13 and three. He was number three in MVP voting. Good for him. He was a backup to uh, Trevor Lawrence on the Giants for like three years before he finally got moved. Uh, didn't get anybody in MVP. Didn't get anybody in. Well, didn't get the coach in. Coach of the year. Uh, we did end up not making any offense player of the years or defense player of the years. We just didn't play well enough, I think. Rasheem Norton, who's a running back we took, he was our third string. He ended up making the list of defense rookies of the year, and Kerry Bradshaw also was up there, but nothing spectacular. So now we're taking on the New York Giants for the first game. Um, yeah, so. I don't know why, Cam Allen just has this weird feeling of just, he kind of has that Saquon feeling, but he also has that, like, uh, Josh Jacobs feeling, where he's where he's technically listed as slow, but his first step is so quick that he hits the hole, and you're already through the hole before the defense has time to shed. The Giants were a very good team. They were, um, of course they were. They were the third seed, but... I ended up playing a good portion of this game, and Greg Tyler and Cam Allen just put together a show. Uh, that's one thing that I'm very happy about, is that they can play. They can actually play, and they're both good running backs, but Cam Allen is definitely the future. I'm just going to bounce it here, and then Cam Allen just makes a guy miss, stumbles into the end zone, touchdown. Uh, and then here on a third and one, we're up 21-17 at this point. Going to power G, he's just going to run in touchdown. Nobody's going to stop us here. 28-17, fourth and two. Can they get it? He's going to throw a dot to him, and they're actually going to go. Uh, they're actually going to make it like a four-point game. Well, actually, they made it a five-point game because for some reason they went for two, I think, to try to make it a three-point game. Uh, they tried going for an onside kick. We recovered it. Nothing too bad there, but walk away with a victory in MetLife. So that's pretty cool. It's always great to see. Uh, Jose Ramos just reminding us that we're two games away. Now it's Battle of the Hawks. Well, battles of the Battle of the Sons of Hawks. Hand off Cam Allen, touchdown, 14-10. Having the ball back, looking once again, trying to find somebody. And we're going to just throw it up for Pat. And uh, I honestly thought that was going to be picked. But, hey, he comes down with the ball. That's perfectly fine. And, I didn't, and it wasn't the guy that was, like, actually covering him. It was the guy that tried jumping it. And we throw a bad pass here. I try throwing a low pass to hopefully negate it. But they're going to take it back to the house. 24-21 here. And then they are back on defense, back on offense. We're up 29-22 at this point. They're going to punch it in with Josh Jacobs, actually. Uh, he's one of the main running backs left in the league. Going to hand off. Going to play action fake here. Roll out to the right. Going to hit Contreras on a fucking laser beam in the back of the end zone. 36-29. Minute 14 left. Just trying to put this game away. Third and six. I want to get the first down. I'm going to throw it up for Pat. He's just going to run under it, catch it, down to their 40-yard line. And then we're just going to run out the clock for the most part. But we're going to be throwing the football and actually find a wide-open Matt Phillips, and he's just going to catch it with one hand. Touchdown. 43-29. We end up beating Ryan uh Austin's brother. So, Battle of the Hawks goes to Austin. It would have been funny if they would have named, like, Ryan Dallas. So, they were Austin and Dallas. Or whatever. I don't know. Maybe I'm just fucking stupid. I probably am, but... Hop, step outside. Cam Allen is going to just reach in. He does not like going down. I can tell you that much. I'm pretty sure I gave him reach it which is why he gets those animations a lot, which is very helpful, by the way. It's pro it's probably one of the better animations, especially for franchise mode. I don't know if there's certain animations you guys like in Mutt or something. I don't know. But Reach It has always seemed to be good to me in these franchises. So 
I don't know why I'm getting tired. So we end up beating the Saints 23 to 16. I didn't even jump in a whole ton on this game. Uh, I just jumped in on goal line stuff. So for the most part. So we end up going to the NFC. So we end up going to the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. We're gonna throw this ball to Contreras in the back of the end zone. A little cheesy, but you know, whatever. He is wide open, and if that was gonna be the go-to target anyway, it wouldn't have been that hard of a pass for a quarterback like Hawkinson. Pat Mahomes still in the league, so up seven to two at this point. Gonna throw a deep ball to Street, and Street just barely beats this corner, and uh, it's just a ball that he runs under. He has such good speed. He had like 97 coming out of college. I think he got up to 98 at one point. I think he was down near 96 at this point. So, it's a very good receiving core. And we're just going to keep roasting and toasting. And then straight here, open across the middle. He's the next guy. He really is. And uh, he just continues to develop. I think he's like 23 at this point. So, he's performed absolutely phenomenal for us as well. I think I was off sides at this point. At on that on that play and uh they just run it in for a touchdown. It's now down twenty seven to twenty one. I'm looking for this wheel right well route white I can't talk apparently. I was looking for the wheel route anyway. And uh Street just goes up and gets it. I just put it in a spot where it's gonna be incomplete or it's gonna be his ball and uh he goes up and gets it. They go down, go back up and uh we're up 31 to 30, and we just punch it in with Cam Allen. But they're not stopping to, and not stopping fighting. Uh, Pat Mahomes just scrambles in for a touchdown to make it 38-36. They can go for the two points, and they did overtime. Overtime was such a fucking disaster. I played the full overtime. I had a punt once. They had a punt once. This was the final drive. Um, it would have just went to another quarter, but we ended up winning, and we got our revenge on Pat Mahomes. Granted, I would have rather probably won last year because we would have sent take one Barkley off with another Super Bowl, but this is fine, too. We'll end up winning the game and uh, making us, I think, five times champs at this point. So, Gordon Davis gets another Super Bowl. Hawkinson gets another Super Bowl. Pat gets another Super Bowl. Phillips gets another Super Bowl. So... Good to be back. Good to win. Bye-bye, Patty. Mahomes. Like I said, some of our guys, like Pat, like Phillips, like Hawkinson, some of those guys are getting up there in age. Getting not quite to the point of, like, major regression, but they are getting there sooner rather than later. So we got to respect that. Um, so we got to put good teams on the field right now. We can't worry about the future. We got to just put as many good people on the, te- on the field, on the team, as possible, and uh, go for it. And, uh, you know, we definitely got some young guys that can do it. We got Street. We got, you know, Eric Ash. We got Brandon Alibray, Mike Lau. But we also have our veterans, Chase Young, Matt Phillips, Pat. You know, all these good guys. Uh, so, granted, I don't know. I don't know what I'm rambling on about. Not the Super Bowl. Do you ever wish that you could put your own people up here? Like, you could pick four people. Like, hey, these four get to go up on the podium. I think I'd put Chase Young, Ed Oliver, um, Matt Phillips, and uh, Austin up there. I think I'd put those four up there. So. But you can't. Uh, Ed Oliver is gone. He apparently filed his paperwork. He's retiring. He actually ended up being on the all-time sack leader list, I think. I think he's, like, number nine. I didn't know this at the time. I didn't really look at stats. I looked at him in, like, season 14. He was number, like, nine just above Khalil Mack at, like, 146 sacks. Above Khalil Mack's, like, 140. But with not a whole ton of money to spend, we have to go out, get some guys, got to get some backups, got to get some uh, just key players. And uh, we got plenty of those hopefully coming in with a lot of these guys, Sammy Walls, Stephen Porter, Marcus Gold, Franklin Glean. Elton Springs, Angelo Weber, uh, Hazelton, Slaughter, a lot of these guys, good guys. Uh, I don't think there'll be anything impact, like super impact, but uh, I I can't just, you know, spend money as freely. Uh, Chris Atkinson, his time's coming up, especially with his contract. 
contract not being in the best shape right now, um, as well as the fact that uh, Larry White's contract is coming up too. We ended up getting Nelson's, Coolidge, Walls, Springs, Weber, Hazleton, Slaughter. So we got some very good backups here. Uh, Slaughter does have Superstar as well. So as a power rusher, six foot th six foot four, 23 years old. We're going to trade number two pick for number nine, 54, and a first of next year from the Jets. I just don't want this pick. The guy that I think is going to be available should be available at pick nine, and that will save us some money. Trading pick 13 for 30. I don't understand how I could ask for a first. I'm giving you pick 30, and you're moving up 17 spots, and you won't give me a seventh. You do end up taking Trevor Smith. This could be the uh, replacement to Goran Davis in the future. Logan Gray, another good center. For some reason, centers are one of the only positions that draft well for the offensive line. I don't know why. Don't ask. They they are. They don't guards don't draft well. Tackles draft okay, but they have to have a depth trait because they're always like seventy one overalls. Kenneth Massey, uh running back, he has a dev trait, that's cool. This is a class that I did go in and edit and I threw a lot of dev traits in. Um so I did kind of cheat a little bit and pick two running backs that I knew had dev traits, but I picked two of the lower dev traits. They are a star, just to let you guys know. Like, I even threw some dev traits at some undrafted guys hoping, like, I made them decent overalls to where they would be picked up eventually. Uh, another guy, Brandon Marshall here, uh, I knew he was a receiving back with a hidden dev trait, so I took him. He's not spectacular, but it gives more diversity, and it gives a better chance of these guys developing, because I'm tired of taking a power back who is a 73 power back, a 71 elusive back but then is a 59 fucking overall receiving back. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? Uh, then I just trade a bunch of, away a bunch of 7th round picks. I just had a bunch of picks built up, so I just started trading them. I just was like, fuck this, get rid of them. Because I don't know if it'll glitch out kind of like Madden 25 did. If you guys don't know, in Madden 25, if you had too many picks, it would glitch out and it wouldn't let you trade anything ever again. So Trevor Smith here, he's going to be back up safety here for a little bit for us out of Auburn. Remember, numbers and position can change based off of needs and going into, you know, the season. Logan Gray going to be our right guard wearing number 69. Nice. Um, Greg Tyler, Donaldson, and Torrance for a first-round pick. So, yeah. I don't know. Tyler just, he already started regressing. Chris Atkinson, Larry White, and a for a first. With that being said, guys, if you guys enjoy my content at all, appreciate my content at all, download any of my rosters, I'd appreciate a subscription, uh, comment, a like, all that stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, roster updates should be out when this video goes live, or will be soon. Bye.